Hey, what's up guys? John here. We are witnessing the fall of Fifth Avenue. Over $200 million due in back rent on Fifth Avenue alone, just in that one strip. Fifth Avenue is home to Gucci. Trump has a building right off there. It's right at the Plaza Hotel, opens right at the Central Park. It's prime. Now, Fifth Avenue is falling apart. Crime is through the roof and people just can't get out of the city fast enough. It's so crazy how fast New York went from being a place of luxury and leisure to now being a trap that many people are looking to escape. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what's happening on Fifth Avenue as well as the crime, as well as some of these new police reforms that they're doing that are gonna essentially reshape the entire landscape of New York City. With that being said, please smash that like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube is gonna be more likely to share this content to educate more people about what's really going on. So please hit that like button, let's begin. Right now in New York City, crime is skyrocketing. Violence adds up 2020 death toll with a 97% jump in shootings, 45% increase in murders, criminal carnage not seen in 14 years. Imagine what's gonna happen when the stimulus runs out, unemployment runs out, there's no jobs and people are desperate and hungry. They're gonna be upset, they're gonna be angry. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna do whatever they need to do to survive. Look what they just passed in New York City against the police department right now. The New York Police Council passed a series of sweeping police reforms for the New York Police Department on Thursday involving issues from excessive force to rookie residency, and no one appears to be happy. After months of calls to defund the police, critics say the new measures do nothing more than defang them. And the ones who have been pushing the hardest for reform said the bills passed by council don't go nearly far enough. But this right here, that includes bills that would make it easier to sue cops for improper searches and excessive force and require the NYPD to track the race and ethnicity of motorists pulled over in traffic stops. That is a horrible situation, and here's why. Imagine being a police officer making $60,000 a year. Everybody hates you. Everyone thinks that you're out to get them. And whenever you pull anyone over, it's because of the way that they look, the way that they act, the way that they behave, the way that it's just there's always a reason. There's always a profiled reason why. And now you could be sued. You could be personally liable for doing that. Who would want to risk their life for $60,000? Just in general today, the crime sky high. Who would want to do that? But not just that. Now with this whole new thing, people are going to be able to sue cops. There's going to be a lot of lawsuits towards cops. And it's essentially going to increase crime even more. It's going to be more hate against police officers, more judgment against police officers, and I think more lawsuits against police officers. It's just, a, it's a bad situation here. You'd think as a landlord, you could have tenants like the NBA and you'd be rock solid. You'd be fine because the odds are they're going to pay rent. Well, no, not anymore. The NBA has kept its three-story store at 545 Park Avenue, even as the neighboring space has gradually reopened. The basketball league has racked up more than $8 million in missed payments. $8 million in missed payments. That's crazy. According to Ed Klein, the attorney for the landlord at Millennium Group, 10 blocks north, Valentino decided to walk away from its four-level space at 693 Park Avenue and sought in court to be released from a roughly eight years remaining on its lease. A New York state judge ruled against its case but the retailer has filed a notice for appeal and turned the Italian luxury label landlord filed a lawsuit for $207 million. It's not just to cover the lease payments, but also for damages to the shop's Venetian terrazzo marble panels. This month, the Trump organization sued footwear maker Mark Fisher, a tenant at the Trump Tower for more than a million dollars in missed rent payments from November. Representatives from Mark Fisher and the NBA did not respond for requests for comment. A Valentino representative declined to comment as well. The rental rates for these retail locations have been plummeting. Look at Soho, 21.6% decrease. Lower Fifth, 19.5%. Herald Square, 18.4%. Madison Avenue, 16.2%. Flatiron, 15.4%. Upper West Side, 13.5%, Times Square, about 5%, and Upper Fifth, about 3.7%. That number is only going to continue to progress, especially with these wealth taxes, the new taxes and regulations that they're trying to push on wealthy people. The only people coming here to spend money are A, tourists who are coming to travel, 
which is going to be highly unlikely if crime is skyrocketing and there's all this new regulation and the wealthy and they're pushing both of them away so it'll be really interesting i personally think fifth avenue they're work, they're going to see big rent reductions across the entire city but primarily these expensive corridors times square fifth avenue you give it another six months, 12 months of this, because I don't think we're gonna be getting out of this anytime soon where New York opens back up. I don't think New York is ever gonna open up to what it once was, unless we get some really big changes, meaning AOC, Como, the big problems in that city out of there, and we open business up fully and get back to it. I don't think that's gonna happen though anytime soon. So pretty scary stuff. You look at the crime, you look at everything that's happened in that city, how fast it just eroded. One of the main reasons why a lot of these tenants aren't paying rent, it's not just because they're not pulling in any revenue. That's one of the reasons. But another reason is that they know the courts are closed and it's gonna be a big challenge to get in front of a judge. So the landlord can make all the noise he wants. Ultimately, it's the landlord is gonna be holding the bag because when courts are closed, you're not gonna be able to get in front of a judge for six months, a year, if you're lucky, probably two years because the courts are so backed up with all of these eviction cases right now and the tenants will be basically in a better position in six months or a year to negotiate against what they owe you. So if your rent say 200 grand a month in a year, that's $2.4 million, 2.4 million. There's many landlords that'll say, okay, fine, just give me a million, give me a million and a half and just walk away. And they'll let them out of the lease because they don't have a choice. Their attorney fees at 500, $800 an hour, and they have a team of attorneys it'll chew up three, four, 500 grand in legal fees. They might as well just take the haircut and move on with their life. So when you look at how bad this problem is, the survey conducted by the Community Housing Improvement Program, a landlord trade group focused on New York buildings subject to the city's rent control. These apartments account for about half of the city's total rental apartments, tallying responses from landlords. The group estimated as many as 185,000 Living in these apartments are more than two months behind on rent with an average debt of more than $6,000. A very sad day for capitalism in New York City. It looks like it's coming up to its last days with more than about $2 billion in back rent due in just New York City. And when you look at the politicians who are supposed to be there to guide the city, not to dictate it, to guide the city, they're out there destroying capitalism, destroying free markets and preventing landlords from collecting rent, telling tenants that they don't have to pay rent, pretending as though everything is in the hands of Big Brother and they're gonna take care of everyone's safety. It's a really big problem and unfortunately it's gonna result in a lack of opportunities and a big restriction on freedoms for a lot of the people in New York City. I personally love New York. I was there right when the whole shutdown started, about a month after the shutdown was began. I went to New York City, got a luxury hotel because everything was like 80, 90% off. And I stayed there for like, a, it was like a hundred bucks a night right off Central Park. It was amazing. And normally that hotel would probably have been six to 900 bucks a night. Plus it had a room service, really enjoyed the best of that city. Cause I knew I had deep in my gut. I knew that I would never get to experience New York City with that level of beauty ever again the rest of my life. And I was right. Here we are, we're getting ready to step in to a whole new city in 2022, that's for sure. What do you guys think about what's happening right now in New York City? Do you have any intentions of going there? Or if you live there, are you thinking about leaving? Really curious as to your thoughts, drop it below and uh, please smash that like button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, if you'd like to learn how to get started on YouTube, click the link in my bio, it's a free live training. And if you'd like to learn how to invest in cash flowing multifamily real estate for beginners, there's a link there as well. All right guys.